Good morning. The Angelus. The angel of the Lord declared unto Mary, and she conceived of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it done unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that we to whom the incarnation of Christ thy Son was made known by the message of an angel, may by his passion and cross be brought to the glory of his resurrection. Through the same Christ our Lord, amen. See, I have God for my help. The Lord sustains my soul. I will sacrifice to you with a willing heart and praise your name, O Lord, for it is good. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Show favor, O Lord, to your servants, and mercifully increase the gifts of your grace, that made fervent in hope, faith, and charity, they may be ever watchful in keeping your commands. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. This word of the Lord came to me. Go, cry out this message for Jerusalem to hear. I remember the devotion of your youth, how you loved me as a bride, following me in the desert, in a land unsown. Sacred to the Lord was Israel, the first fruits of his harvest. Should any presume to partake of them, evil would befall them, says the Lord. When I brought you into the garden land to eat its goodly fruits, you entered and defiled my hand. You made my heritage loathsome. The priests asked not, where is the Lord? Those who dealt with the law knew me not. The shepherds rebelled against me. The prophets prophesied by Baal and went after useless idols. Be amazed at this, O heavens, and shudder with sheer horror, says the Lord. Two evils have my people done. They have forsaken me, the source of living waters. They have dug themselves cisterns, broken cisterns that hold no water. The word of the Lord be to God. The response, 
With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. O Lord, your mercy reaches to heaven, your faithfulness to the clouds. Your justice is like the mountains of God, your judgments like the mighty deep. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. How precious is your mercy, O God. The children of men take refuge in the shadow of your wings. They have their fill of the prime gifts of your house. From your de delightful stream, you give them to drink. With you is the fountain of life, O Lord. For with you is the fountain of life, and in your light we see light. Keep up your mercy toward your friends, your just defense of the upright of heart. With you is the fountain of life, O oh Lord. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, you have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The disciples approached Jesus and said, Why do you speak to the crowd in parables? He said to them in reply, Because knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven has been granted to you, but to them it has not been granted. To anyone who has, more will be given, and he will grow rich. From anyone who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because they look but do not see, and hear but do not listen or understand. Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled in them, when, which says, You shall indeed hear but not understand, you shall indeed look but never see. Gross is the heart of this people. They will hardly hear with their ears, they have closed their eyes, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts, and be converted, and I heal them. But blessed are your eyes because they see me, and your ears because they hear. Amen, I say to you, many prophets and righteous people longed to see what you see, but did not see it, and to hear what you hear, but did not hear it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when I was a child and frequently getting in trouble uh, throughout my life with my parents and getting corrected for this and that, every time I was corrected or scolded by a teacher or a parent, I always thought it was, you know, a bad thing, right? I, I looked at it like, oh, they're being unfair, they're being mean, I didn't like it, it was suffering to me. Right? But now as an adult, I look back on all of those times, and I see in most of them, not all of them, sometimes they were wrong, but uh, in most of them, I see actually a blessing, a teaching of me the right way to live, to become a better person. Right? Had my parents not scolded me for this or that, had they not forced me to say thank you and yelled at me when I didn't, right? or you're welcome, or you know whatever plight and pleasant things that they used to get mad at me about for not doing, right? I wouldn't be nearly as good of a guy, not that I'm all that good of a guy, but it, it near, I wouldn't be anywhere close to where I am today. And I'm very thankful looking back because I, I see those interactions in a totally different way than I saw them before. I had eyes now to see what I didn't have eyes to see back then. Today, Jesus says, blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. And I think, I mean, how many of us would have, haven't imagined at least once or twice, like, gee, wouldn't it, be, wouldn't it have been great if I was born then and I could have 
walked with Jesus. I could have seen him, heard his voice, right? Well, think about this. Well, if you're going to do that, if that's an option for you, right, you're going to have to be born without hospitals or medicine or internet or telephones or bathrooms or shower. Like, you know, do we really want to go back there? The answer is we should say yes. We should, like, prefer that. Right? But the lucky thing, the good thing is we don't have to. Right? Jesus said, okay, the prophets wanted to see what you, what you saw, but they didn't. So blessed are you. So blessed are the apostles because they get to see Jesus. But the thing is, which group are we in? Are we part of the prophet group who don't really get to see Jesus? Are we like, but the, the apostles are blessed, but not us. Right? For seeing Jesus. Well, that, that's not true. We are with the apostles. We are the blessed ones. Right? Because Jesus came to give us his spirit. He is with us now as much as he was with the apostles, even more so. This is why Mary wasn't allowed to cling to him. He said, you need to let go of my physical body so that you can, you can receive me in a much, much deeper way. So blessed are the apostles for seeing him physically, but blessed are they for spiritually containing him, being with him in the Eucharist in a whole new way. And that's us. That's what we have more than the prophets did, more than everybody who came before Christ. We just need the eyes to be able to see that truth, that Jesus brought the kingdom with him. We are the ones who see and hear. We're the ones who have to try to see and hear, right? Jesus says, you know, to those who have, more will be given, and those who don't have, even that will be taken away. Right? kind of sounds like an unfair little thing, but it's just kind of a true thing in life. Right? These Jews, they're not looking, they're not trying to hear, and like a child, you can look at the situation and see suffering and see emptiness. Right? I didn't see in my punishments as a kid any benefit, any goodness there. Right? And the Jews he's talking to, they're seeing God all over the world and in Jesus, but they're not paying attention. All they're seeing is negative, bad, no good, nothingness. But the people who are willing to open their eyes to look for God and find him, they will see. And upon seeing, they will be richly rewarded. And they grow closer to God. So those who have just a glimpse of God, the willingness to look, they will receive more. But those who will not see, those who refuse to, even whatever grace they've had, will dwindle and die. So my brothers and sisters, we are the ones who can see and hear God if we just help but have the will to look and to find him in all things. We are the blessed brothers and sisters. So let us rejoice and be glad. We have come together in the power of the Spirit to give thanks to our Father in Heaven for His great love for us, a love revealed in Jesus and symbolized by His Sacred Heart. As we prepare to unite our hearts with His in offering this Eucharistic sacrifice, let us pray for ourselves and for all the children of God. Lord Jesus, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father in Rome, for the bishops of the world, and for all the people of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the world you came to save, that all may open their ears to your gospel and open their hearts to your love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear our prayer. For the church, sprung from your side as you died upon the cross, that it may be a beacon of the way, the truth, and the life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for all who are in any way afflicted, that they may find comfort for their spirits and the tender love that wells from your sacred heart. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear our prayer. For ourselves, that we may be ever faithful to our baptismal commitment to you and bring your work and your love to the world in which we live. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, hear our prayer. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you have, you have called, called us, us to share your saving mission, mission, sinners though we are. We accept this mission, and we renew today our baptismal commitment to you and our consecration to your sacred heart. Lord Jesus, we offer you ourselves and all that we do to be united with your Eucharistic offering to our Father in heaven. That we may serve you with greater fidelity, we ask you, our divine mediator, to obtain for us the favors we seek in this new year. Deepen our faith and touch, and touch fire, fire to our hearts, hearts that, that we may respond with love to the great love for us and for all that fills your sacred heart. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be acceptable to you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who in the one perfect sacrifice brought to completion varied offerings of the law, accept, we pray, this sacrifice from your faithful servants and make it holy as you bless the gifts of Abel so that what each of us has offered to the honor of your majesty may benefit the salvation of all through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your Word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you.
in a similar way when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Owen LaCour, Sr., whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your faith. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other some sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. For the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, now bring me to judgment and condemnation. But in your loving mercy, be for me a protection of mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be be saved for eternal life. Behold, I stand at the door and knock, says the Lord. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door to me, I will enter his house and dine with him and he with me. has passed our lips as food may we receive with purity of heart that what has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those you have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended.